Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm Ewan O'Leary uh, with Offset Collective, and I'm really excited to be here tonight to take you on a very quick fly through of carbon offsets, making sense of them, what they are, how they work, and most importantly, how they benefit the environment. So here's a big scary number for you. 387 parts per million. That's the number of, or the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that we have right today. But don't worry, you know, Al Gore was last year, I think a couple of years back, and he left his hockey stick at home, so I'm going to start with a, you know, a much more a palatable number. 350 parts per million. That's our objective. Because I know everyone here is a, a goal-oriented uh, kind of individual, so, you know, that's what we're aiming at. Um, it's going to change. Okay, a few things about carbon that are really important to understand, okay. First off, it's a, um, it's a colorless, uh, carbon dioxide is a colorless, odorless gas, which makes it not very photogenic, you know, so it's difficult to kind of get people excited about you know, this, this bad sort of thing. So I start, you know, any kind of a, a conversation like this with a carbon footprint. And us in the U.S., we have the largest carbon footprint in the world, okay. Historically, we're responsible for way, way, way more than any other uh, civilization. Okay, so this is the Wikipedia explanation. Um, what's important here is the extent of your carbon footprint, okay? Carbon being fungible, carbon uh, basically being, um, I'm sorry. Oops, okay. <laughs> so, so this is basically how offsets work. I'm going with my notes here. Um, so basically, you're putting carbon dioxide or carbon dioxide equivalent into the atmosphere. Uh, and, you know, you're paying someone else, somewhere else in the economy to actually remove those car that carbon emissions for you. And how do you actually put a, a value on the price? So this is all about putting a price on carbon, okay? Because if somebody's got a price on it, even a thousand dollar car, okay, you know, it's not going to go to the scrap heap. So that's a really good thing. Okay, so, second on here, alright, is this whole, this whole system of cap and trade is, can we scale? You know, just like I know a lot of you guys are at Twitter, Okay, you know, can we actually scale? Because honestly, this system works, all right? The voluntary carbon market is a proxy for consumer demand for climate change, okay? You know, and, and if, this, if the system is applied across the entire globe, it can work, you know? So here, here are what uh, you're buying when you're buying, here in the US, when you're buying uh, carbon offsets. What I like to call pop sets, okay? You're buying the sexy stuff, the windmills, the, uh, the, the trees, you know, cute little cows. But, you know, you actually have to follow the money to understand exactly how this, uh, th this benefits the economy. Uh, I'm sorry, how this benefits the environment, okay? Because uh, first it has to benefit the economy. That's the whole thing. You know, as you wind down, as you kind of uh, get beyond business, usual, uh, business as usual to business as unusual, <laughs> um, you, you find that... Um, Doing the same things, repeating what you've been doing, or getting paid for, carbon, uh, for uh, offsets from what you're uh, currently doing doesn't actually work, okay? So how do we get to transparency? How do we make sure that the folks out there who are selling us carbon offsets are transparent? Well, you have to democratize the market, and the best way to democratize the market is for individuals like you and me to get involved, to participate, Okay, and, and actually uh, be active in these standards. All right, there, you know, this is an eye chart. There are a whole bunch of standards here. Um, each one of them is different. And the way they differ is, is really based on geography. So, you know, if there's a, a regional uh, effort right now with the Western Climate Initiative, which is different from something that's happening on the East Coast because of, you know, uh, some of the co benefits of the projects or the project types. You know, sometimes you have um, uh, uh, renewable energy in there, sometimes you have forestry in there. So, does, does it work? Yes, it does. We've proven that it works with uh, uh, sulfur dioxide and acid rain. No one here hears about acid rain anymore because we've largely solved the problem. Okay. So, there's some caveats around uh, carbon offsets. Two here. Leslie, Father, for I have sinned. They're like papal indulgences. They're selling hot air. And then the second is, uh, we can't see the forest for the trees. You know, it's, it's, it's very much around, um, you know, plant a tree for me and I can drive this Hummer H3. You know, it doesn't work that way. So here is uh, all your tree, tree of belong to us, okay, which is a great way of saying, well, it's actually quite crass, environmental justice, because this is actually what we, what we have. We have this green colonialism going on. Anyway, so just do something, okay? Join a crag, join a carbon reduction action group, and, you know, W, if you're listening, okay, please, 
Drilling the coastline is not the answer.